Between 1841 and 1844, a railway line was built from Bristol to Exeter. As it approached the final few miles into the city, a low area of land needed to be crossed. This area is where the rivers Creedy and X meet at Cowley Bridge and was always notorious for flooding in winter. Initially, only the main line passed along the valley floor, but in 1847, a line to Crediton branched off and headed north. The meanders of the River X were straightened when the Bristol and Exeter Railway was built, causing floodwaters to concentrate at Cowley Bridge Junction, where the two railways met. Often, the floods would rise over the line, washing out the ballast and damaging line-side equipment. With the increasing risk of flooding and the line closures which resulted, something had to be done to limit the frequency of these events and improve the resilience of the railway against flood damage. This programme will discuss the changes that have been made to the rivers at Cowley and the measures put in place since the disastrous Exeter City floods of December 1960 and subsequent flood events. Richard Watts was the BR Western Region resident engineer on site during work carried out in the mid-1960s to reduce the effect of the seasonal rise in water levels. Although this project was essentially a bridge replacement scheme, the river's course was the key driver to the direction of this project. The course of the River X before the railways came was nowhere near where it is now. It used to meander across the floodplain at Cowley and then join the River Creedy north of where it joins it now and then flow through the three-span Cowley Bridge behind me here, gives the area its name, which was built in 1813 or 14, long before the railways. The 1836 Bristol and Exeter Parliamentary Plan shows where the River X and the subsidiary watercourses ran in the early 19th century. And on the 1900 Ordnance Survey, the city boundary line, highlighted in red, still followed the original course of the river. When the Bristol and Exeter was built, they diverted the X to run on the northwest side of the new railway for about a kilometer. They also constructed Cowley Weir, a balancing channel from above the weir to Cowley Bridge, a widened channel southwest to join the original main river, and the Brunel Arch Bridge over it to carry the credit and road, which had to be realigned and raised to suit. The North Devon line was completed in 1847 by the Exeter and Credit and Railway Company as a double line with broad gauge track of seven foot and a quarter. That's over two metres wide. The only example of broad gauge track with signals, locomotives and rolling stock nowadays is at Didcot Railway Centre in Oxfordshire, who very kindly let us visit as they prepared for their annual events just before Christmas. At first, there was no connection to the Bristol and Exeter line, but a temporary station was built at Cowley Bridge. A contemporary oil painting shows a building in the valley on the far left, close to the railway line, possibly a temporary station. The London and South Western Railway, the principal shareholder, had the tracks converted to four foot eight and a half, standard gauge, planning to build a separate line from Cowley to their Queen Street station in Exeter, but the gauge commissioners decreed that the track must be broad gauge, so the line and the station at Cowley Bridge remained unused. The station was probably sited in this field, between the present line to Crediton and Barnstable and the Crediton Road, and the entrance may have been where this cottage now stands. Eventually, the railway was opened in May 1851, operated by the Bristol and Exeter, with one track converted back to broad gauge and a single line junction at Cowley, later converted to double line. 
the temporary wooden station was dismantled and re-erected at Newton St. Sires. Finally, in 1860, the LSWR reached an agreement with the Bristol and Exeter for a connection from its Queen Street station, now Exeter Central, to St David's, with mixed gauge track from there to Cowley Bridge Junction, and a lease of the line to Crediton and onwards to the North Devon Railway and Barnstable. The LSWR line crossed the X immediately north of Cowley Bridge Junction on a curved and multi-span wrought iron bridge, 75 metres long, which was widened to two tracks in 1879. North of this, across the floodplain, were three other bridges. These spanned the original course of the River X and a flood opening next to it, and a bridge over the Mill Leet about 650 metres north of the junction. The railways began to experience problems from seasonal flooding, and in January 1886, the Illustrated London News reported major disruption at Cowley Bridge. Following the construction of the Bristol and Exeter, there was a tendency in times of flood for water to flow down towards Cowley Bridge Junction on the east side of the railway. A culvert through the embankment that had been built upstream of Cowley Weir proved too small, so it was augmented by the GWR in 1896 by a larger culvert downstream of the weir. Often these culverts would be insufficient, causing flood water to overtop the embankment and severely disrupt train services. Well, we're standing on the uh, Crediton Road Bridge over the uh, railway at Cayley Bridge Junction and uh, you can see that the Barnstable line is going off to the left, single line, and the Paddington line is coming back, coming down from the right as the Great Western Main Line double line. To the left of the railway, that's where Cayley Bridge Junction signal box used to be. Beyond it, the grey railings, that's the outlet from what we call the downstream culvert which runs from round about where that grey box is by the pub diagonally across the railway to let the flood water out from the right hand side of the track across to the main river X. Beyond the 80 mile an hour restriction sign you can see some more grey railings that's what we call the upstream culvert which is built by Rennell which is the only outlet into the river X before we, the Barnstable line was built. By the early 1960s, the railways and the rivers at Cowley had changed little for over a hundred years. But the four bridges north of Cowley Bridge Junction on the Barnstable line required reconstruction or replacement. After the Exeter floods of December 1960, a flood relief scheme at Cowley was developed by the Devon River Board and the British Transport Commission, following proposals by consultants Macdonald and Partners in November 1961. Two new double line bridges would replace the four bridges with diversions of the watercourses to improve the flow of the River X and protect the waterworks installations which had come to within 60 millimetres of danger level during the flooding. The proposals were completed by December 1962 but an earlier Transport Act had created the new British Railways Board in 1963 and there followed the infamous Beeching Report at first the North Devon lines were threatened with complete closure, but following much opposition, the Barnstable line was reprieved. The Plymouth route also survived, but eventually closed beyond Meldon Quarry in 1968. To save costs, it was decided to single the line and the new bridges for approximately 500 metres from the junction. Detail design was carried out by Mott Hare and Anderson for British Railway Southern Region, and a contract was let to Keir Construction. But before work could commence, the North Devon line was transferred to the Western region. So for continuity, the contract was supervised by Mott Hay, with a Western region resident engineer responsible for the railway engineering and operating aspects. Work started late 1965. The up line towards Exeter had been singled for 800 metres, so that the new bridges could be built on the down line, which was converted into a temporary contractor's siding. 
A temporary signal cabin just north of Upton Pine Overbridge controlled the connections back into the double track and into the contractor's siding. The contractor rented the adjacent field for his compound and a convenient site for the resident engineer and clerk of works living caravans was provided at the Carry Bridge Inn by Don and Kath Hooper who made the workers very welcome. The down line was spread up to rail level with stone dust delivered by train from Meldon Quarry to provide an access road throughout the site from the contractor's compound. Work proper was delayed by an objector to the scheme who owned part of the work site and refused access to his land. The contractor finally paid him a generous sum for access with comprehensive indemnity against damage to his livestock, grazing and fishing. Construction eventually started in February 1966 during night track closures driving steel sheet piling for six coffer dams for the new bridge abutments and piers using a diesel pile hammer. In places, this involved tipping out the rails and pulling back the sleepers. But after noise complaints, this was changed to Sunday daytime closures for driving the piles closest to the line. The remainder were driven during weekdays between trains and the coffer dams were excavated using back actors and grabs, with framing and strutting fixed as excavation progressed. The coffer dams were up to seven metres deep, excavated into the shale bedrock and continuously dewatered using diesel pumps, not always successfully. Where track sleepers had been trimmed to accommodate the piles, passing trains overhung the excavations. At the bottom of one of the coffer dams, a large tree trunk was found, needing several days to cut through the saturated timber and lifted out by crane. A mixing plant in the site compound produced all the concrete for the new abutments and piers in the coffer dams and it was transported by dumper trucks using the temporary access road alongside the running line. Trains were limited to five miles an hour and vehicles would stop when they were passing. Still work for the bridge spans was fabricated by Red Hue Engineering at their works in Water Lane near Exeter St Thomas Station. Robert Hopkins started his career as an apprentice with Red Hues in 1966. The year work began on the bridges. It was, yeah, it was heavy stuff and uh it was an eye-opener, actually, from leaving metalwork at school to this, and uh, the bridges... I'd never seen anything made like that in my life. After the steel was delivered, and I understand you used to have a hell of a job getting it out of here on these corners. When it was big, long stuff, the police would put up signs up and yeah. warn everybody in the street they were going to back out of there and then drive up the road. Yeah. And a few times, a lady from that Cockfield Street, laid in front of the vehicles, they wouldn't let them in, wouldn't let them out, and uh, we had some fun then, and uh, everybody come outside and looked and laughed and clapped, and that was it, that's how it went, yeah. that was it. Were you involved in the actual erection of the steelwork at Cowley? No, uh, at yeah. Tunnel? That was a special... I was too young at the time. But we used to go to college one day a week, day release. Yes, yeah. And uh, McCarthy, Mac McCarthy, he was a manager, and he took us for lessons as well, because yeah. we were uh, learning to be platers, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. And that was... In my mind, a plater and a fabricator are two different things. A plater can get rid of a drawing, do what's on the drawing, where the fabricator gets a part sent to him yes. and he puts them together. And that's, yeah. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. It was generally a happy place to work. <laughs> oh, it was, one of, it was all right. Yeah. It was brilliant. It, it was but always, the, always the leg pulls and the cracks. Oh, uh, you, you've seen that. I mean, yeah, yeah. when you was out here, the, the worst thing, when you come out your time, you knew you was going to get yeah. painted and greased up and everything and that yes, was it. they yeah. don't even do that no more no, i mean no, no, no. that's part of it the bridges are still there they are yeah yeah thanks very much for that's all the memories well that's i got great. some good memories of and, that place uh, and uh, some and lovely so, men yeah. and all the men that used to work in there i'll tell you what you couldn't beat a better bunch in that you couldn't yeah. Yeah. they were all right yeah. and they learned i taught they taught me a lot Steelwork was delivered by road and the bridge components brought in across the field from the Crediton Road. 
Red Hughes' work to install the steelwork had to pause between trains, and as you can see here, a ballast train from Meldon Quarry approaches the Mill Loop Bridge. After the steelwork had been erected, the reinforced concrete bridge decks were cast in situ. The decks were then waterproofed, bridges 535 and 536 were removed and filled in, and the formation prepared for the new single line. Uh, this is the bridge on the Barnstable line that uh, we built over the Mill Leet. It's uh, a few hundred yards north of County Bridge Junction. Looking a bit tatty, it doesn't look as if it's been painted since we built it 55 years ago. But um, it's still there and uh, the piers look okay. Can't see the abutments very well, but uh, it seems to have survived. So Red Hue Engineering did a fairly good job, I think. A single to double line turnout had been installed just north of the Mill Leap Bridge, so that the new track could be laid in over the completed structures with a temporary connection back into the up line. Fred Butler was a member of the crew on the first train one Sunday morning in August. They went out on the old line with an excursion to Barnstable hauled by a Hymac diesel loco driven by Walt Thomas. On the way back they were warned by Ernie Barrable, the ballast train driver, that they'd have a rough ride over the newly ballasted track and the two new bridges. The track had only just been connected up. The redundant section of the old upline was removed so that the new river channels could be excavated under the bridges. Earthworks had already started, but not without problems stripping the topsoil. Excavation was carried out by dragline, with six wheel drive dumpers to carry away the spoil to temporary stockpiles. A track excavator removed the sheet piles from under the bridges, and where the X channel curved round under the new bridge, the sides and bottom were lined with stone pitching to prevent scour. On the left bank, alongside the railway, a sheet piled wall was constructed in stages to retain the new embankment and track where the old X bridge was to be filled in. Six inch pumps running 24 hours a day kept the excavations dry. And when the old channels were pumped out before they were filled in, most of the fish left stranded in the final half metre or so of water were returned to the river. However, fresh salmon appeared on the menus of a number of local restaurants that week in 1966. Meanwhile, two accommodation bridges were constructed, one to cross the Mill Leet, the other to cross the new balancing channel below the flap valve sluice wall. The bridge over the balancing channel was fitted with brackets on the parapets for diverted water mains and the sluice wall below it incorporated flat valves to prevent backflow into the waterworks turbine outlets. Two 450mm diameter water mains from the waterworks ran underground southwestwards to the Crediton Road. For much of their length they followed the line of the new River X channel so 500 metres of replacement cast iron mains had to be laid on a new alignment from near the new flat valve sluice wall to the Crediton Road. Where they went under the railway, a pipe culvert was built between the redundant piers of Bridge 535, and a new pipe crossing was provided spanning the balancing channel adjacent to the road. In addition to the material excavated from the new river channels, an extra 230,000 cubic metres of fill were imported. Temporary bailey bridges were erected for earth moving vehicles whilst filling in the old channels and to provide access for demolishing the old X railway bridge. The Brunel upstream culvert under the mainline embankment was extended with a concrete box structure cast in situ between the caissons which had supported the old bridge. The old channel was then filled in and restored to ground level. The embankment under the down half of the X railway bridge had been created during construction of the sheet pile wall by discharging Meldon stone dust through the bridge deck from 40 tonne hopper wagons and side tippers during night track closures in late 1966. The fill was topped up to formation level and the rails and longitudinal bearers removed and replaced with plain line track. Later the main girders were cut into sections and loaded away by rail leaving the cross girders buried in the embankment. On completion of the work, the contractor's compound was dismantled and the field reinstated. 
The remainder of the contractor siding and access road was removed and Bridge 537 demolished and filled in, enabling double tracks to be reinstated north of the new single to double line connection, although the line has since been singled throughout. Finally, the ground frame at Upton Pine was removed and control transferred to Cowley Bridge Junction signal box. From here, you can see where, approximately, where it's alleged that a temporary station was built, probably just a simple platform with some red carpet on, for Queen Victoria when she visited Lord Idsley, who was then her Chancellor of the Exchequer, who uh, lived then at Pines House. And the bridge, you can see, is carrying Pines Hill up towards Upton Pine over the Crediton Line. And the station would have been just sort of to the right of that tree trunk of the pine tree. Flooding continued to affect the Cowley area and in 1972 the Devon River Authority engaged the hydraulics research station at Wallingford to construct a hydraulic model of Cowley and its environs. This was to examine conditions on the floodplain from Cowley down to Exwick Weir. In June 1976 hydraulics research produced a report for the South West Water Authority successes to the Devon River Authority, proposing further alterations to the river channels. It recommended the diversion of the River X to flow during flood conditions into the River Creedy and through Cowley Bridge, which would accommodate much larger flows than the bridge next to the railway at the junction. A flood channel approximately 40 metres wide would be created by widening the mill leet from where the flat valve channel joined the X to where the mill leet flowed into the Creedy, thus taking advantage of the extra wide twin spans of the 1967 Barnstable Line Railway Bridge. Other flood protection proposals were not adopted, but in 1979 land was purchased and the mill leet widening was carried out. Essential items involved demolishing the 1967 flat valve channel sluice wall and the accommodation bridges. They were replaced by two new bridges over the Mill Leet next to the Barnstable Line Railway Bridge. The outlet from the turbines of the, at the waterworks used to come out into this channel that I'm standing on, which was the Mill Leet Tail Race, and the bridge and the pipe crossing that's been built here was a replacement for what we built in 1966. There was also an accommodation bridge on which the diverted water mains were carried. That in turn has been replaced by the accommodation bridge on the east side of the uh, Barnstable line. The turbines are no longer used, so the tail race is no longer necessary and it's uh, pretty full of vegetation. Over 40 years on, the rich soil of the valley has returned to agricultural production and the trees have grown again along the river banks with no sign of the disruption caused by the construction work carried out in the 1960s and 1970s. Uh, well this is one of the new accommodation bridges which was built after 1978 when the mill leap was widened to, to accommodate greater flood flows. Uh, there's one built, one each side of the Barnstable Line Bridge, which is over here to my right, and uh, downstream, the old accommodation bridge uh, was, had to be demolished because it was much too narrow for the widened uh, mill leet, and this was the replacement. And, and of course, looking upstream, you can see towards the confluence with the course of the River X next to the uh, Great Western Main Line. This is Stafford Bridge not Stafford's Bridge, about a mile upstream from Cowley Bridge Junction, and it is really where the flooding problems originate. Mark Phillips was the area civil engineer at Exeter during the 1990s and was often involved with issues on the floodplain. Stafford Bridge here was a, a, a frequent um, trouble spot for us because when the River X 
reached high flood levels, there was a concern that it might damage the, the bridge and we did have to close the line on occasion, maybe yeah. once or twice a year, something like that. So what I did was we had a, a procedure where we would put a watchman out here, Gosh, uh, yeah. day and night when the river was high. It's not much of a job. No. <laughs> well, I think he had a, a little yeah. blindside hut, whatever. Yeah. But with instructions to give warning to his supervisor that, um, that the line would be closed if the river level came within a couple of inches below the bottom yeah. flange yeah. of the main girders. And that, unfortunately, quite often meant a closure of the line for a, a day or two until the river subsided. Yeah. Over time, there's been various schemes looked at whether the bridge could be raised to avoid this closure. Coupled with the flooding further downstream at Cowley Bridge Junction, of course, which is all part of the same event usually. Because it used to flow over the yes, top of the flow flood over banks here, here yeah, and go yeah, down the yeah. wrong side of the road, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. But nevertheless, if at least this problem could be alleviated, then the closure might happen less frequently. Yeah. And so one proposal was to raise the railway profile but it would require about two miles of earthwork, you know, embankment raising, yes. and it, eventually it was it was ruled out. I understand yes. subsequently by Network yes. Rail. This berm here that we're standing on, they keep this at the right profile. Yes. Um, if it's too low, then they get too much water going down over the floodplain unnecessarily early. If it's too high, it doesn't afford the protection it's here to, to provide. Yeah, so yeah, they need to keep yeah, an eye on that yeah. as well. So it's all quite subtle around yes, here. Yeah. I did understand there's some sort of threshold monitoring device here now that Network Rail have that they get warnings from the Environment Agency as well. So I'm wondering if that solar panel is actually the power for the threshold device actually. Doing the watchman out of a job. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. The flood defence scheme down through Exeter that was done after the awful 1960 yes, floods. Yes, yeah. Uh, and which you were involved in those bridges being reconstructed as part of that. Um, I think that's been pretty effective as far as protecting Exodus is concerned. Good, right, so. I think the worst problem up here is if they don't manage to rescue any livestock in time. I think this is the only robust scheme that's ever been done. This one that was done in 2018, I think they completed it. The scheme Mark was referring to resulted from Network Rail's 2013 Weather Resistance and Climate Change Study following another serious flood in 2012. Well, back in 1980, an attempt was made to improve the flow of water and to get rid of it from this side of the railway line. So these fairly large diameter pipes were put in but uh, unfortunately they were found to be not sufficient to deal with the increasing amounts of floodwaters that were being experienced. Contractor Amco Giffen and their consultant Ove Arup were appointed to design and construct two large culverts through the embankment upstream of Cowley Bridge Junction. Well these are the new flood culverts which were installed in 2018 after a study was done by Network Rail following the 2012 disastrous floods that washed out Cowley Bridge Junction completely. And of course the idea is to release the water that comes over the flood banks at Stafford Bridge and finishes up on the wrong side of the railway on the east side, flows down parallel with the railway, finishes up at Cowley Bridge Junction and has nowhere else to go. So having done uh, an in-depth study of the hydrographics of this area, this was the size of culvert that the design engineers decided to uh, install. Well, this is the, the outlet end of the new culverts and uh, they discharge onto a rock mattress which is, forms the bed of the spillway to stop erosion and uh, the water, the flood waters then discharge down into the River X which is just beyond that whole load of grass and reeds and so on, bulrushes by the look of it, just on the east side of the new Barnstable Line railway bridge that was built in 1966. On the day we were filming, this was quite slippery. So, as you'll be able to see, the um, culvert is formed of a load of precast units, all brought in from Shea Murtagh in uh, County Westmeath, and uh, dropped into a gap that was created in the railway embankment during a 75-hour closure of the railway. And um, 
all bonded together to form a dual culvert. The wing walls were actually built before the culverts were built, so they were already in place before we had to close the line. The uh, inlet to the culvert from the, the ground above, this was specifically designed hydraulically to ensure that it had sufficient capacity to direct the water into the culvert and to prevent scour these rock filled mattresses were placed to stop the ground being scoured away from in front of the apron and uh, also the banks have been reinforced with grass mattresses to help prevent scour to the sides. The depression in the field here that I'm standing in was actually the course of the old River X which before the railway was built it used to curve around and you could see it in the crop marks as well it comes around in a curve and right back round to almost exactly where the new culverts were built in 2018. Well this was contractor's compound where their working area was to build these culverts and it was originally just levelled, a whole lot of hardcore put down and it was a mess. When they finished that was all taken away, re-topsoiled, seeded and it's now a beautiful wildflower meadow. There's vetch, there's moon daisies, there's no end of uh, varieties of flowers here. Absolutely superb in just three years. Now when, when Brunel built the railway and diverted the River X, he had to build two bridges, one to go over each of them. And to do so, he had to divert the credit and road to come up over the top. And so you can see from the bend at the bottom and the hill coming up to the bridges where he diverted the road which originally came across at ground level and came out by the Cowley Bridge Inn on the Stoke Road. So the Cowley Bridge Inn was on the junction on the corner and effectively the car park to the Cowley Bridge Inn was actually the old road. When the Bristol and Exeter Railway was built the River Rex could have been left to continue across the floodplain to Cowley Bridge. Another option suggested in the 1961 report was to reroute it further west through a wider bridge under the Crediton Road to divert floodwaters away from the railway. Whatever the reason for the decision, there remained the problem of water overflowing the flood banks at Stafford Bridge. This might have been reduced by providing wider openings where the X passes from the east to the west side of the track. It is hoped that this will be sufficient to discharge any flood water that comes down this side of the line. So that's what's been built. It's really the first piece of engineering which has specifically addressed the flooding problem at Cowley Bridge Junction since 1897 when one of the culverts was put in by the Great Western Railway. And really all the other flood relief works which have been done on the other side of the railway have done nothing to alleviate this problem as part of the city flood relief scheme to divert water away. We wait to see if it's going to work, so we watch out for the next major flood. A crossing point of the River X at Cowley has probably existed since Roman times. A bridge was first recorded in 1286, presumably with a causeway across the floodplain to raise the road above the flood level. The bridge was finally destroyed by floods in 1810. The present arch bridge has three spans totalling 47 metres, reportedly built in less than a year, opening on the 5th of October 1814, and has survived regular flooding for over a century. Only time will tell how the latest flood relief works perform with the predicted climate change and resulting increases in rainfall and river flows.